Hi, we are broadcasting live from Children's Hospital of Wisconsin. My name is Corey. I work on the social media team. And today I'm joined by Dr. Michael Earing, a cardiologist in our Herma Heart Center. And we are going to talk about Marfan syndrome, aortic aneurysms, and related connective tissue disorders. And we would love to have you join our conversation. So if you have a question for Dr. Earing, please go ahead and post it in the comment section of this video. And we'll try to answer as many of those as we can throughout our live broadcast. And thank you to everybody who posted their questions ahead of time. We really appreciate that. Now, if you like what you're seeing today, please go ahead and click the like button. We want to hear from you. So let's just get right into it. Dr. Earing, to begin with, can you help us uh, understand your role in the Herm Heart Center here at yeah. Children's Hospital, Wisconsin? Um, I'm an adult and a pediatric trained cardiologist. Um, my specialty is taking care of kids that were born with heart defects okay. um, that have survived in adulthood. Connective tissue disorder, Marfan syndrome, aortic aneurysms are genetic problems right. that you're born with, and so that's one of my specialties that I mm -hmm. take care of. We developed the Marfan and related connective tissue disorder program as part of the adult congenital program here, and we're by far the largest program in the state of Wisconsin, mm -hmm. um, serving patients throughout the state, um, you know, all the way up to Green Bay and Iron mm -hmm. Mountain, all the way down to the southern border. And maybe to begin with, it would be helpful to understand, when we say connective tissue or connective tissue disorders, what do we mean? Yeah, that's a, a really great question. Um, in the past, Marfan syndrome was something everybody knows, but mm -hmm. what connective tissue disorders are is, is that everything in our body that gives us stretchiness is connective tissue. So if I pull my skin and I pull mm -hmm. it, it stretches. And then we release it, it snaps back. Connective tissue allows that to happen. You take a breath, your lungs expand, they recoil, mm -hmm. and then you breathe out, they expand back. Your blood vessels, the blood comes in the vessel, mm -hmm. it stretches, and then it relaxes. Mm -hmm. Connective tissue allows that elasticity of the body. Mm -hmm. And connective tissue disorders are characterized by findings in all the areas of our body that have a lot of elasticity. So mm -hmm. lungs, right. eyes, heart, blood vessels, um, skeletal problems, and that's what a connective tissue disorder is. There's a lot of them. There's a lot of different names, but what makes it a challenging thing is there's a lot of overlap between them. Okay. There's findings in one syndrome that overlap with another, and so with genetics, we've unlocked a lot of new names of new findings and have a better understanding of how all of them are related. And so where does Marfan syndrome sit within all the different um, disorders? Yeah. yeah, Marfan syndrome is related to a mutation in one of the genes that codes for a protein in our connective tissue. Okay. That gene is called fibrillin-1. Mm -hmm. And the end result is, is that it causes a cascade of events in the tissues of our body that have an abnormal connective tissue. And over time, that causes a cascade of enzymes and proteins in our body to be off balance. Mm -hmm. And that leads to the findings of bone overgrowth, um, problems in our lungs, problems in our blood vessels, problems with our eyes. Mm -hmm. And that is a pattern that you'll see with Marfan's. Now, I would imagine then the connective tissue that's related to the operation of the heart could be life-threatening. Is that right? Right. So patients with connective tissue disorders, one of the biggest worries is that they can be at risk for aortic aneurysms. All aortic aneurysms, when you look at them under the microscope, look the same, but there's a lot of different types of disorders that cause that, mm -hmm. and it's how you get there. And the end result is, is there's an abnormal protein in the aortic wall, or how mm -hmm. you regulate your aortic wall integrity, that leads to a stiff aorta. And if you think about a tin can, if I hit on a tin can, it, it actually kind of expands over okay. time. But if I take a balloon, if I hit a balloon, it just keeps recoiling, bouncing, yeah. keeps in its shape. What a connective tissue ends up doing is the aorta becomes really stiff, and if you beat on it long enough, it expands and expands and expands. And eventually, if the wall gets too thin, now you can have a rupture and tear, and that's life-threatening. And so that rupture and tear, is that the aneurysm part of it? That's the aneurysm. Okay. Aneurysm is a simple term in that it, it's a scary term to people, mm -hmm. but it really means that a blood vessel that's two to two and a half times bigger than the average size for a person of that size. I'm big. You're a little smaller <laughs> than me. My aorta should be bigger than yours. Right. And so that's the definition of an aneurysm, two to two and a half times bigger than the normal value for that person. Well, this may be a good time to bring in a question we got on Facebook from Elizabeth. She asked, I had an aortic aneurysm that nearly killed me a year and a half ago. The surgery saved me. So grateful for the great doctors and surgeons. I'm curious why this happened to me. I had genetic testing for connective tissue disorders, and everything came back negative. Do I need to have my two kids checked? Yeah. 
So that's a really long question with a multiple <laughs> questions in it. So let's tackle it piece by piece. Okay. Um, one is is that aortic aneurysms are inherited in, in a genetic fashion. Okay. What we mean by that is it typically is autosomal dominant, and that means that if a mom or dad have it, there's a 50% chance that it can be inherited by the children. So in your case, your children definitely need to be screened. And typically what we mean by that, that's with an echo. Um, then we typically will do that every three to five years depending on the age and, and where they're at. Also, it depends on if you have other findings, meaning do you have other aneurysms, do you have other skeletal features, those are all important. Genetic testing is a really challenging aspect because every year genetic testing changes. So the genetic testing you may have had 10 years ago is not even, even close to the same genetic testing that we do now. For an example, we can actually test for 31 genes at once that have all been associated with aortic aneurysms and the cost of those 31 genes is the same as what it used to cost to do one gene five years ago. So you may have had genetic testing, but you had genetic testing based on what was done that day, and we're constantly changing. So it doesn't mean you don't have a connective tissue disorder. It just means that we don't know the gene that you had at that time. It's also really important to know where that genetic testing mm -hmm. was done and what they tested for. And that's where your experts come into play. There's a lot of different genetic testing that can be done and they're not all created equal. So it's really important to work with your specialists and it's a constant changing field. And it's another reason why it's really important that if you have an aortic aneurysm or a connective tissue disorder, that you are seen by a really multidisciplined care team that actually can talk about those and explain those things to you. Mm -hmm. But more importantly, you're involved in education, involved in research, keeping up on those things and allowing that to continue. So it sounds like an, an echocardiogram is an important part of this process. Can, for okay. those who might not know, can you explain what that means right. exactly? An echocardiogram is an ultrasound of the heart, okay. um, and it allows us to look at the dimensions of the arteries themselves. It's a simple test, takes about an hour, um, and it's something to do. The problem is, is that many people say, oh, well, I've had an echo, and it was normal. Right. Well, a single echo doesn't rule out whether you have a syndrome or not. It really is a screening echo at that point that says you don't have an aneurysm. What we find is, is that that can change over time, and so it's really important that if we don't have a genetic test that's confirmed what your diagnosis is, that it's probably important if you are a first-degree relative, meaning mom, dad, mm -hmm. has had um, an aortic aneurysm that you followed. Now, here's the tricky part, right? Every family, somebody has to be the first, and so yeah. if you're the first member in your family that has the syndrome, the rest of the members may or may not be at risk. It's just so I understand you, if my parents um, have the genetic, or found to have this, right? right? Then there's a chance that I could have 50%, it, 50 chance. Yeah. There's also a chance that I, as a child, could be the very first one in my entire family That's to have right. it as well. Right, and so most of the time, Marfan in particular, um, just to say one, if a Marfan syndrome patient is identified or mom and dad have it, 50% mm -hmm. chance for the child. Mm -hmm. When we identify a child, most of the time, 75% of the cases, mom or dad have it. Mm -hmm. But still 25% of the time, they're the first. Wow. Other syndromes, though, it's different. Other syndromes, there's more commonly, when you see them for the first time, they may be the first case. So when you say a child is born, let's say, and they have no family history of this, um, how is it diagnosed? What's the first thing that you would see? Yeah, often there's features, um, musculoskeletal features, skin findings, okay. eye findings, and that's usually what often sets up the evaluation. Okay. Um, what Marfan syndrome is, and what a lot of the connective tissue disorders are, is that they have musculoskeletal features, skin findings, mm -hmm. eye findings, and then cardiovascular findings. Because it affects the entire body. That's right. right. Back to where mm -hmm. that elasticity, any one mm -hmm. that is, you can have. Um, such things as scoliosis and abnormal curvature of the spine, indentation of the chest, pectus excavatum, pectus keratinum, club foot where the foot's rotated in. These are all skeletal features. And so two children that see. may have the exact same syndrome could present different features, Very right? Very differently, yep. And so you're not always looking for the exact same thing, but yep. just a, a spectrum of things or? Yep. A pattern. Okay. Now, um, I would imagine, it seems like over the last few years, genetic medicine has provided a lot of opportunity and hope in so many conditions. It sounds like genetics is a big part of, of the care we provide in right. diagnosing. You know, as a physician, how do you see the advances in genetic medicine impacting the work you do? Right. So it's an amazing thing. So Marfan's is a great example of mm -hmm. this. 
Marfan syndrome, the gene was identified in Marfan syndrome to be fibrillin 1, and that was, we felt, it's a structural protein. Mm -hmm. You know, you have an abnormal protein, the structure's abnormal. So, aha, we've just figured out why we have disease. Mm -hmm. What happened, though, was is it didn't explain everything. Um, and what we found is, is that fibrillin, that protein, is not only a structural protein, but it binds to other enzymes and actually regulates the function of those other enzymes. And suddenly we went from this is a structural protein to a functional protein, meaning mm -hmm. it regulates things. And what it did was unlock ways of treating it. So are there medicines that could alter those mm -hmm. other enzymes? And that's where Losartan and Atenol, medicines that may affect the rate of dilation, were mm -hmm. developed. And it's a great example because we went from genetics of understanding what caused the disease mm -hmm. to how that caused the disease, and now you identified medicines and therapies that may alter the actual syndrome itself. Wow. That is really cool. Yeah. And that's the part of genetics. Also, as we unlock genetics, certain people have different findings and there's mm -hmm. patterns. And some of those patterns are worse, meaning some people have aneurysm and dissection at smaller dimensions. Some people have aneurysms not only in the aorta, right out of the heart, mm -hmm. but they can have aneurysms in their head, their neck, and other places. And if you don't know that from a genetic standpoint, you don't know what to look. Right. That's another reason why having a multidiscipline center that deals with connective tissue disorder patients, most people in the country don't always know that. Mm -hmm. So what's the difference between Marfan syndrome, an example, or Louis Dietz syndrome, mm -hmm. or Ehlers-Danlos syndrome? Everybody knows their connective tissue disorders, but the nuances of that are what set a program apart. And so a place like the Herma Heart Center where somebody like yourself might be a point of contact, but among a lot of specialists who have to care for a child who has all of these different yeah. conditions going on, can you talk about how that care is coordinated yeah, and how absolutely. it's so important that everything works together? So it's a team of individuals. I have a nurse practitioner. Mm -hmm. I have another attending, Dr. Gindy, that works with us. But more importantly is we've identified care individuals, so the ophthalmologist, the eye doctor, mm -hmm. the spine doctor, the lung doctor, people with connective tissues that have lower bone density than normal. And mm -hmm. so how do you deal with that? What are the risks long term? We've identified those people. But not only on the PED side, but the PED side and the adult side. Patients born with Marfan syndrome now are living a pretty normal life expectancy. Mm -hmm. There's bumps in the road. But as those patients age, we found that they have other issues that we didn't see much before because now they're living longer. So we have not only the pediatric side, but the adult side. And that's mm -hmm. where a, a multidiscipline program has developed those contacts, help coordinate that care. So that's I think a huge deal. So there's two parts of what I'm hearing you say. One is um, probably the, the care and the follow-up care that, that yeah. a child receives, and then that transition into adulthood and, and right. making that seamless. Let's start with on the pediatric side. How important is that follow-up care um, for a child? Right. So for the first time in our life, we may have medicines that may alter or slow the rate of dilation of the aorta. And mm -hmm. so if you start a medicine in a child that may prevent that from happening, that's huge. And so following up, adjusting the meds, children grow fast, right. they do. And so adjusting those meds and following them routine is crucial in the pediatric population. Also though, you know, scoliosis affects your ability to walk. It causes pain. If you have a curvature of your spine that's abnormal, what people forget is it affects your hips, affects your knees, mm -hmm. affects your feet, your ability to walk, play at school, gym class. So you got to monitor those eyes. If you have a lens dislocation, which is a really common problem in Marfan's, you can't see at school. So you have to be able to monitor that. Mm -hmm. That is a constant adjustment. We want them to learn and do well. Those are monitoring things are crucial in the young population. And that's mm -hmm. just a few examples to go with. And here we have uh, an adult congenital heart disease program. I know yourself, are you pediatric and adult trained? Is yes, that right? Yes. And so how does that play into the care we provide? Right. Well, it's great because Dr. Gindy and myself are both adult and pediatric trained mm -hmm. and Lindsay is one of our nurse practitioners mm -hmm. that deals in adults and peds. So we see the whole gamut here and that's why it makes it. It's a one care team that helps coordinate the care across the whole system here mm -hmm. for all our patients. Now, we probably have folks tuning in today that don't live in Wisconsin or don't live in Milwaukee, and they could be all over the, the globe, really. What tips do you have for somebody who's watching today who might be looking for a place to receive care for their child? In general, what things should they right. be considering? So I, I really think that it's really important that large, large centers that do a lot of this are really important. And it doesn't mean you have to go there all the time for your care. Mm. But what we find is we work very well with all the local community physicians, the other cardiologists and that, and there's a really good partnership. I'm, I, I'm a realist about life. I have four kids. It's not easy to get my kids to the doctor. 
if you have a local physician that you trust, that's important. But mm -hmm. I do think it's worthwhile at least going to some of the large centers at least once every couple of years to kind of have this. It keeps you up on the research. What are the treatment options? What mm -hmm. are the options for you? I think that's really crucial. Um, they're not all created equal, meaning that every patient is different and unique, and having somebody that understands that uniqueness is really crucial. Okay. We've, we've covered a lot. I want to make sure, are there any yeah. topics that I've missed or any other um, topics you think we should cover? Final thoughts? I could talk for hours yeah. about this. I love what I do, and this is a really important aspect. Aortic aneurysms, though, in general, though, mm -hmm. is a huge topic, and the important thing is it's not all Marfan's. All the connective tissue disorders are related, and the end result is an aneurysm with risk. Those are the things is that our goal is to treat, monitor, to prevent mm -hmm. any of those major events occurring. Well, that's great. It sounds like you know picking the place you receive care is important. It really, yeah. really is important. Well, I want to thank everybody for tuning in today. I really appreciate it. And if you have ideas for us on what other live broadcasts we do, please go ahead and post them in the comment section of this video. We would love to hear from you. Of course, we'd love to have Dr. Earing back on sure. Facebook Live again. So, thank you so much, Dr. Earing. Yeah, thank you.